how's it going? Long time no see. Happy New Year, if that even makes sense to say anymore. I mean, but I, you know, welcome to 2022. Let's let's say that I was gone for a while, and while I was gone, I got a lot of really good questions in my comment section. So the next few videos, I'm just going to dedicate to answering these questions. And I usually say this at the end, but just so you know, if you have any questions about Reaper or really anything in the realm of audio, leave a comment. I always respond to every comment. If there's a video I can point you to, either by me or from my fellow Reaper content creators, I'll point you to those. And otherwise I'll make you a video. And if you like the work I do, you can support the channel in many ways and we'll get to that in the end. For now, let's get to the first question by Matty B. Do you have any idea or video on how to create a custom toolbar that you can insert specific templates like bass, guitar, keyboard, or effects templates into a project? This is a great question. Basically what Matty is suggesting is kind of like what I would call a modular template. In most other DAWs, you would make a project template and you can make a mixing template for yourself. But since Reaper has track templates, that's a little bit more useful if we want to assemble a mix from a few buses. So for example, right now I have a project template in front of me. This is my mixing template that I'm using on my album. And on my album, I have the same sets of recordings for every track. Every track has drums, you know, two kick mics, two snare mics, two sets of stereo room mics, etc. And then every track has bass, guitar, vocals, some tracks have backing vocals. This last bus, PBHKS, stands for piano, bells, harp, keyboards, and synths. One or a few of these are to be found in my tracks. So in this case, I went with a project template, but if someone were to send me multi-tracks from their project, wouldn't it be cool if we had a toolbar full of track templates and then we could assemble a mixing template from kind of smaller subgroups of tracks that we have saved as track templates, and this is totally possible. And this is what I do when I do sound editing for film. And I've explained that in a video that I'll link above. But for music, let's just recreate this from scratch. So the first step is obviously to make a few track templates. I'm assuming you've already done that. But if not, I'm going to do one and then the rest is rinse and repeat. So for example, with my bass bus, I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to right click on them, save tracks as track templates. And this will automatically bring you into the folder containing all your track templates. And here I've already made a new folder called Music Mixing Buses. And I got my drums bus on there. And my drums bus is also numbered one. So you'll see why I created a folder and why I'm also numbering these in a second. But I'm just going to go bass bus. And I'm going to rinse and repeat for the rest. So just a small caveat here is that in my templates, all my parallel sends, those are all contained within the same parent. So my drum reverbs are under my drum buses. Some people choose to have a separate effects bus. And if that's you, you can still utilize this setup. Just know that once you assemble your template from a bunch of track templates, there may be some additional routing that you need to do. Okay, so I saved all of these six buses, and now I want to add these to a custom toolbar of sorts. So this would be really easy to do if you have SWS. I'm going to go up here to extensions and I'm going to choose resources. So we have covered some aspects of resources before, but basically here is where you can save a bunch of different things like images, effects chains, track templates and projects, and then you can use them in actions. So for example, in the past, I've shown you how I use this resources window to create an action to de-click my dialogue. So I'll put the link to that up there. But for now, let's just select the track template tab here. Yours may be empty. As you can see, I already have a few things on here. I'm just going to right click on this empty slot and I'm going to go set autofill directory. This will open our track templates folder and I'm just going to choose this folder and I'm going to hit OK. And now if I right click here one more time and go autofill, all those six track templates that were in that folder are populated here. You got to pay attention to these numbers here. So for me, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So I'm going to open my action list. And here I'm going to type resources, track, template. And as you can see, that shows us these actions called import tracks from track template slot X. So just to show you, for example, if I have this track selected and I run this action, import tracks from track template slot eight, that's our drums bus. Reaper will import my tracks from this track template into my project. I'll just put those in a toolbar and I'm off to the races. However, as you can see, I only have 10 available. And if you are going to use this for up to 10 track templates, then that's pretty easy. You just add these to a toolbar. 
but you may need to add some more of these actions for slots 11, 12, 13, up to however many slots that you have. So I'm gonna show you how to get those actions, but if you don't think you're gonna be working with more than 10 slots, feel free to skip this next chapter and go right to setting them up as a toolbar. So resources is where it's at. So anyway, to make extra actions for this, I have to modify the sws.ini file. And this may sound scary, but I promise you it's really not. So all I gotta do is go to options and go to show reaper resource path in explorer slash finder. That will bring us to this folder here. And once you have this folder here, which I recommend you also kind of add to your sidebar if you're on a Mac, I'm gonna close Reaper. And in this folder, we're going to look for a file called snm.ini. We need to open this with a text editor. So whatever you use will work. And here you can see some code and it may not really make sense to you. And it definitely doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but it's quite easy what we need to do. And here I'll just hit command and F or control F so we can find something here. And I'm looking for resources. And this is the line we're looking for right now. So main resources, import tracks from track template slot N. Right now, as we can see, this SNM action is equals to 10. And that means 10 slots of this action have been created. But we can come here and increase this number if we want. So I'm gonna set mine to 30. I'm not sure if there's an upper limit. I don't think it's wise to set this to 3000. <laughs> you know, maybe let's do 30 and then take it from there. Now I'm just gonna hit save and close this. So this file is read every time you open Reaper. So you gotta make sure your Reaper is closed. If your Reaper is open, doing this will do nothing. This file has already been read. So you gotta close your Reaper, open it again, and the changes will take effect. I'm going to reopen my Reaper now. And in fact, let's just start with a blank template. And here again, I'm gonna open the action list and go resources, track template. We want import tracks from track template. In my case, it's slots eight to 13 that I need. And you may need, you know, one to six or whatever. And these are just like any other action. So for example, if I hit command option and S, I'll get a MIDI track here. It already has labs on it and it's already auto armed. It's set to MIDI over double replace, etc. So you can set hotkeys to these like I did with my default MIDI and audio tracks. And if you wanna know how to make that, there's a video linked above. Or just like any other action, you can just run them from the actions list or you can put them in a toolbar. Now I've already gone over how to make a custom toolbar many, many times. So I'm just fast forwarding through this bit until we have our toolbar. In the description of this video, I'll put a link to another video where I explained how to customize your menus and toolbars with the correct timestamp of where to go. So now we can just close this resources bit. We can forget about it entirely or until we need it next time. So goodbye resources. And I can just instead open that toolbar that we made. Here are the actions. So I can select bass and here is my bass. Maybe in this track, I only have a bass, a piano and a vocal performance. So I need to bring my entire template in there. So that's pretty neat. So the other cool thing about having like a modular template is that when you do a few mixes and you want to do a new mix, instead of just starting from a project template that hasn't changed at all, you know, you can update and upgrade and kind of pimp your track templates and add it to this modular setup. So in a recent mix that I did, I took one of my PBHKS buses and there was a saxophone in the song. So I now have a sax bus. And then we just save this as a track template, put it in the same folder, give it a number and name. And after a while, you will have a bunch of different track templates that you can put on a toolbar or you can just run them from wherever you want. Or I mean, really, you can always just also right click and go insert from track template, right? So if all of that sounds really lengthy to you, I mean, you know, right clicking once and going to one sub menu is not too much of a pain in the butt. If you make folders, they show up on top. So that could be easy for accessing. So I can just, you know, choose my sax bus and put it here. And the last thing before we go, this is already a long video. If we go to our resources, we can see that if I open this tab, we also have effects chains in here. Again, I have some stuff here, but I like to use the resources for when I'm using the effects chain in a custom action. But if you just want to load an effects chain, you don't have to use resources, there's an easier way. So just open your effects browser by pressing Shift and F by default. Scroll all the way down to where it says effects chains. And here are all my effects chains. So if I want, I can grab any of these and right click on it and go create shortcut. And here I can set a shortcut for it. Or if I just cancel out of this, if I go to my action list, 
and look for Puma Blue Snare, I'll find this action, which again, I can add to any toolbar that I want or run from here or what have you. But anyway, I think that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. Keep the questions coming. If you like the work I do, you can support the channel by becoming a member on YouTube or you can make one-time donations through buymeacoffee.com and all the links will be in the description and up here and down there and all over the place. A huge thanks to everyone who supports the channel. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.